And we're back. Another episode of Flushing It Out podcast, a New York Mets podcast powered by Elevate Media. Um, usual three are back, Nico, Windrum, and Malfa. So glad to be talking again. And you, know, you might be asking yourselves why you're talking about the Mets. They haven't signed anybody. They haven't signed Jordan Springer. They haven't signed Trevor Barrett. They but, you know, there have been some news that has come out. And we like talking Mets, so whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, I guess we can go more recently. The new uh, Japanese pitcher that's on the market. What's his name again, Windrum? I, I can't remember. I can't pronounce it. That's my issue. It's uh, Tokom, uh, Tokiomo. I have – hold on. Let me pull it back up. I had it on Google Translate to try to figure out how to say it. <laughs> I don't think you need Google Translate. Tomoyuki Sugiyama. All right, so Tomoyuki. That, yeah. sounds, that sounds right to me. So, yeah. guys, you know, he's a free agent now. Um, and apparently the Mets are – like have like risen to be this team that are like seriously in on him. I don't know how to feel about him. Don't know anything about the guy. Um, but, like, what have you guys heard in terms of, like, the dollar amount that's going around around his name? I heard right now $25 million on the price that you have to pay the, his Japanese team. So, the, the uh, I, f- I forget what city they're from, but the Giants, you have to pay them $25 million. And then then you get to negotiate with him. You have, like, you have the rights to negotiate with him. So, I mean – with that all said and done, you're probably looking at about seventy five million for him. Yeah. But is that, that worth is it for thirty the, like is that worth it for thirty one year old? He's thirty one years old. He's coming off I was looking at his stats recently. He's had one down year in the past about four or five years. He's his career uh, ERA is two, three, four. Last he's won two of their like Cy Young's over there. And this year he won the Cy Young and the MVP. So I mean really? Yeah, it's it's a 31 year old pitcher. It's you know, I mean, he'd add depth to the rotation, but Which with they, that asking price, I don't know if he's worth it. Yeah, that's that's a tough, that's a tough situation. I don't know. Like, I mean, personally, I think you still should rather go in on Bauer than a guy like that. You oh, know? yeah. Um, Low yeah. strikeout guy. He's not a high strikeout guy. He's more pitches to contact. So I don't really know how it will translate to the MLB level. Doesn't yeah. throw for a lot of innings either. Um, oh, see, you see, the more and more you talk about him, the less I like him. I don't know how. Uh, yeah, I'm not crazy about him, but you know, it is something to think about. He is a name that we're targeting. Right. So, what, what do you think, Malfa? Uh, I mean, I wasn't when I saw it, and I saw his age, and I saw the money that was involved. I wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, I mean, I guess if it's a consolation prize, if they don't end up with Bauer, uh, but right. I feel if, if if they're interested in a Japanese pitcher, if they'd have missed out on Bauer. I think they should go out to Tanaka. You think Tanaka, really? I'd rather go for um, – I would go after Tanaka. They missed that on Bauer. I feel like Tanaka is just the age is too much. His inability to stay healthy over the past few years. I mean, he's great in the playoffs, but – His elbow scares me, but that's the only problem. Yeah, I don't want to take yeah, any risks on any more guys with elbow issues. Yeah, I don't trust him. And also, I, I also he has like that Yankee stank on it. Like, I just don't know if I even want that in the Mets. You know, like, I want like fresh – like Steve Cohen, like money, like come. I mean, obviously, if we use with Steve Cohen money, I just, I just don't like how he's like associated with the Yankees. Lemayhew is a different story, considering he's one of the best hitters in baseball. But Tanaka, I don't know. I think that, that like they'd be better off getting somebody else in the market or just you know plugging in Lugo for. Well, here's my question. Spot. You mentioning Lemayhew, I don't really know. Like, I mean, Lemayhew is probably the best hitter in baseball, but I don't know like where he would. That's a bold fit, statement. Like, I I mean best contact hitter definitely I I think I don't I mean Possibly, he's had yeah. so many great years over the past few years he's just been flown so under the radar yeah but um where would you play him because right now Jeff are we're positionally we're looking at Pete or Dom at first Jeff at second uh, yeah. Rosie or Jimenez at short uh, JD at third unless he's traded um. It's just about – I don't know where – we have to figure out where his fit would be because Jeff already does his thing. Like, Jeff is our yeah. contact hitter. He plays multiple positions. Yep. Um, I think personally that if – I think the only way that you should get DJ LeMahieu is if you buy out Cano's contract because if you get LeMahieu and then Cano comes back next year, then what you got? Rosario, McNeil, LeMahieu, Cano. Um, who knows when this guy Ronnie – Mercio, whatever the prospect's name is, is you know, is going to come up. It's just I feel like it's too much of a log jam, and it, like it already is a log jam right now um, yeah. for the middle of the infield. I think if you buy out Cano, then yeah, 
you can go get LeMahieu and then put and then you could rotate uh, LeMahieu and McNeil from second and third, just either way. But then I think you need to you need to think about trading, you know, JD Davis for a pitcher maybe or because he's I think he's too good of a bat to just have on the bench because then he because then that pretty much eliminates the infield for him. That is jam packed. He can't play first base. Maybe he can get the occasional start and left, but. I mean, at that point, like he's really just going to be like a like a really good bat off your bench, and you could just trade him for some value. Yeah, exactly. Like that's my thinking. I think we don't really target Lemay. We should not focus on Lemayhu as much as we should focus on Bauer and Springer. Right. Bauer and Springer needs Lemayhu's not a need, but he is a great piece. Yeah, I mean, I think Le- I think Springer's a lock. I know Windrum, your prediction or your source is continuing to. Make us all look like every day. They make us all look like buffoons, but whatever. It's all right. We'll we'll ride it out with you, Windsor. Sorry, we ride and die together. I, I'm so. waiting. I'm waiting for it. So, but I personally, I think Springer's a lock. I think he's coming. I like. There's a report about the Blue Jays. They don't have a stand, uh, a chance against Steve Cohen. I don't think they do. And I, I think the Blue Jays will get Lemayhu, but I think the Mets will get Springer. You think so? I think the Blue Jays will get Lemayhu, and I think we're gonna get Springer. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I do think Springer's in, um, but what we re- did want to talk about, main point of this was the news about Nolan Arenado and the Rockies coming out. Well, this is a report. I guess we don't really know how true it is, but everybody was talking about it. So it seems pretty valid that the Rockies want the Mets to reach out to them for a trade for Nolan Arenado. And I've, I've never seen a report like that, like a team saying, yeah, we want that team to reach out to us. I'm sure it's happened before. I've just never seen it personally. Um, but and now I guess the conversation comes up whether you want Arenado or Lindor because you can't really have both. Like, you don't have the prospects to trade for both. You don't have the money to sign both. So, like, what do you guys think? Like, would you rather have the stud third baseman or the stud shortstop? I'd rather have Lindor. Um, but I've seen more and more stuff come out saying how not a lot of people don't think it's going to end up happening with uh, Lindor. Um, the trade altogether. Yeah, I forgot. No, they, they, I forgot who they said the the clear favorites are. I want to say it was. I want to say it was Toronto, but I could be wrong. Uh, but they said there was a team that was. It's it's clear that like when the time comes that they're gonna end up being the the, the biggest player. But if I mean, right. I would prefer more. But if since if, if it's not gonna happen, then Aaron, I don't I don't I don't see how you can't go after Arenado. I mean, he's probably the biggest position of, other than center field, our biggest position to need right now at third base. And um, getting a guy like Aaron Otto, I mean, especially because he could be locked up for the next six years. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I, I would we, go all in. On Lindor. Yeah. On Lindor. I don't know. Per, like, personally, I do like Lindor more than Aaron Otto. I just think that we already have two good shortstops, you know, not Lindor level, but. We do have two young, good shortstops, and like we don't have a true third baseman. So I feel like just filling that hole would just make more logistical sense for the team. And then at the very least, you, you'll have him for at least two years. You know, Lindor would be one year because nothing's guaranteed whether they stay or they, you know, sign an extension or not. Um, so I would take Lindor, but – boy, I would take Lindor over Arenado, but, I mean – since we have two shortstops, I think you have to go for Arenado. I mean, personally, like in my opinion, he's the best third baseman in baseball, and he's probably a first ballot Hall of Famer. Like the guys, the guys legit. I think Arenado makes the most sense with the current construction of our team because he would fit perfectly going right over to third base. Um, personally, though, and from listening to and remembering what uh, Steve and uh, Sandy said at that first press conference. They're really focusing on building a strong core up the middle. And if you're looking at the team right now, I think their main targets are center field and pitching because they want to be strong up the middle. And, I mean, if you can get stronger up the middle by adding Lindor over Rosario or Jimenez or Mauricio and you put a, a guy like Lindor in that center and you have McCann, DeGrom, Bauer, whoever you get pitching-wise, um, McNeil, Lindor, Springer, I mean, that's – championship level middle middle core of your team right there yeah. and then you have the pieces around it I mean Arenado is like you said you got the best third baseman in baseball and best defensively best best offensively he's 31 or 32 no he's 29 is Arenado 29 
I'll look it up. I'm I'm very positive he's 29. I mean, still getting up there in terms of uh, in terms of baseball age. Yeah, he's 29. He's going to be 30 at the start of the season. Yeah. Um, you know, he's got two years left in that. Yeah, he, the Rockies also signed him to a huge extension too. So, do you want that to be your extension and the chance that he can opt out in two years, and then you might have to resign him or let him walk and let and trust Brett Beatty. Yeah. Um, I think just the opportunity to have Lindor in the core of your lineup and then just have the, so many other little pieces around him. I think Lindor is just the slam dunk of what you have to do. But I, I would not be mad if we got Arenado. Then who would play third base if we had Lindor? Well, mm-hmm. I it depends on who gets traded. So That's true. If, say, Jimenez, Brandon Nimmo, and – I don't know. Josh Wolf go to Cleveland, right? And then you're looking at there's been talk Rosario wants to wants to try out moving to third. Do you let him see it? If JD's still there, do you try JD there? You know. It, third base would become interesting, but you have so many guys that could play third base that could do it well. That's not a big deal because you already have a strong left side of the infield with Lindor already there. He's a great defensive shortstop. Yeah. I, here's the thing with me. I feel like putting guys like J.D. Davis and and Ahmed Rosario at third base is like the old Mets. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, they can do it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll be serviceable. Like, maybe not the old Mets, but just the Mets post-David Wright. You know what I mean? And I guess it's just been their logic on other positions. If you have Jimenez at shortstop, that, that dude does not miss a ball. He no, will yeah, track down right. everything. And I personally love watching him play. And then you have a guy like Aaron Nato who could pick it. That might be the best defensive left side infield in baseball. I mean, I defensively for sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like on the defensive side, um, which is I, I don't know why I just think Arenado would make more sense because we don't have an actual third baseman who could really play there. Well, here's my next thing. 2022 is when Beatty's supposed to be up here. Are you really gonna like keep him down there or trade him or something? When you have that, like, if you can get Lindor and one year you just have JD or Ahmed playing third, your next season you'll have Beatty, Lindor, McNeil, Pete as the infield. Yeah, but who says that Beatty won't go in the Lindor trade? I don't think Cleveland will ask. Cleveland wants a lot, but it's only a one year. Looking at it right now, it's a one year rental. So Cleveland can't, doesn't have that much leverage on other teams, depending on whether Lindor will sign with them or not long term. That's true. That's true. So I don't know. I think I think Arenado's a great player and he'd be a great fit. But I think there's just so much to think about with the future and building a sustainable winner that Lindor makes more sense to being that sustainable winner. All right. Well, since you guys always agree with each other and I'm always the outlier, how about you, Lindor, Bo- Lindor boys, come up with the trade proposal? Just throw something together real quick. What would you – and. Don't be like the S and Y graphic guys, because those whoever runs that those account are terrible. or whoever comes up with those trade proposals should be fired. They're horrible. Obviously, I would love for it to happen because it would benefit the Mets greatly, but they are literally the most lopsided trade proposals I think I've ever seen. And MLB networks are normally pretty bad, but S and whoever does the S and Y ones are horrible. But if you guys got a Lindor proposal, spit it out there. I think realistically, so like I said, Cleveland can't doesn't have that much leverage, so it's not like they can just decimate our farm system just asking for Lindor. And they're gonna want MLB ready players who are like that, so they can still compete, but not spend that much money with like they would with Lindor. So realistically, I think they'd ask for Jimenez. Probably. Um. I don't know why, but I 100% see Brandon Nimmo being a part of this deal. They are so weak in the outfield in Cleveland. A guy like Brandon Nimmo, who's just a great outf- – I mean, a, go- a great corner outfielder. The guy can't play center. Yeah. Great corner outfielder with a great bat. That You can't not ask for that. So, Jimenez, Nimmo. And I think they'll definitely ask for one of our top prospects. Yeah, no doubt. I don't know if it'll be – but I don't think it'll be one of our top five. I could definitely see it being JT Gain or Josh Wolf, And maybe Isaiah Green. Not Matthew Allen. He's the number four prospect in the Mets. Yeah, I think the Mets, I think the Mets are going to 
stand firm on not giving Allen, but they'll give Ginn or Wolf. What do you think, Michael? Uh, I agree with that. It's going to start with Jimenez. I feel like since he he's, his, he just came up, I feel like they would they would rather have him over Rosario. Uh, especially, you know, you want to replace a guy who's as good defensively as Lindor. You might as well get Jimenez. Yeah. Um, and then I think I think they'll want both the JD and Nimmo. Um, and then and then it's going to come down to another prospect, like Windrum had said. Um, I could see a, a Wolf. I could see uh, Mark Vientos at third base. Because uh, I, I saw one earlier today. Uh, so I came across a proposal as I was looking around on Twitter. Uh, someone had put Jimenez, Vientos, and David Peterson. For Lindor? For Lindor. Give it up, Say that Peterson. again? Uh, it was Peterson, it was Vientos, and, um, and Peterson. You know, that would make a lot of sense to me in a trade because – Given that Peterson is risky, though, I feel. Peterson is very risky, but that would definitely make sense to me, like, as a deal that Cleveland would do because they want the pitching. Uh, Venios is supposed to be up next year as well with Beatty in 2022. Um, And then Jimenez, just they need that shortstop. And a young guy like him, I could 100% see that. With Carlos Santana leaving Cleveland – I do feel like Dominic Smith would be in that deal, too, to play first base for Cleveland. I really feel like that would happen. Yeah, I could see Dom there, but it just – I don't know if the Mets want to part ways with him before we find out about the, the uh, uh, DH. Yeah, I personally, if, if it was a Lindor trade, what I think Cleveland would ask for, it would be Jimenez, Dom Smith. Um. Because yeah, like, I feel like if you put Dom in, then you can't like ask for Nemo because that's like some serious major league talent for for Lindor. So I think it would have to be Jimenez, Smith, like a guy like Matthew Allen or like a Junior Santos or whatever. Um, I know Santos is is the number eleven prospect. Not, yeah, number eleven. And then who knows? Like maybe they ask for a guy like Beatty. I mean, like this Lindor is a cornerstone face of the franchise type of player. So it's that would. There's just, yeah, there's but just it's just that people. whole risk without the extension that I don't think a lot of teams are going to be willing to part ways with that much talent if they know they're not getting him to – if they know they might not be able to get him to an extension. Right, right. So, so since I'm on the Arenado camp, I'm saying that they'd probably ask for J.D. Davis. They would definitely ask for Brett Beatty. And personally, I think that you would have to give up a guy like Matthew Allen – to the Rockies because, I mean, how long have they been dying for pitching? You know I mean? They're, they're going to have to get a prospect out of it. And I wouldn't even be surprised if Syndergaard was in that deal for, uh, for a guy like Arenado. So, I mean, it, that's – it's a tough cho- – I mean, like, I, who, who even knows what to make of a guy like Syndergaard, you know, like who, has, who can be one of the best pitchers in baseball or he can be a total dud who throws 100 miles an hour, you know, coming off an injury. I mean, I don't think I would give up, you know – Davis, Beatty, and Syndergaard. I think that's a lot. Well, here's the thing with the Rockies. They're trying – like, they're actively trying to get rid of Arenado. There is a reason that they're getting rid of Arenado. It's because they want to clear room so they could put – so they can uh, sign Story. Um, right. I think they're more willing to give up Arenado than, like, everyone thinks. Like, they want to get – they want to offload him. Yeah. So, they'll take on – They'll take on a Nimmo, for sure. Um, I could see them doing Mark Benitos. Um, I could see them doing a pitcher, but I can't see it being Allen because Allen is so high, and they just want to get rid of Arenado for that contract. So I could see it being Josh Wolf, or I could see them giving Josh Wolf and Junior Santos. I get those four. Wait, wait, who are the ones before Santos and Wolf? Nimmo. And uh, Mark Vanitos. And you're saying that Beatty wouldn't be a part of an Aaron Allen trade? I don't know if I'm not a hundred percent. Like I'm not a hundred percent certain if Beatty would. I think. I think because I, I feel like there's more. Him, right. I think the Rockies will have to ask for him, but if they're really trying, if they're really serious about getting rid of him to sign Story, they're gonna have to. They're going to bite the bullet on a guy like. Not getting Beatty, but getting a guy like Benitos. Right. Like they're going to do it because they want to get rid of this contract so badly. 
Yeah. That, there's just there's a lot of pieces with the Mets and like certain guys don't have pieces. I mean, like a guy like Dom Smith in left field. I mean, like like what would you get? Like as of right now, let's say Nemo and Smith are still on the team for 2021. How do you manage that left field situation? Because Dom needs at bats. You know, I'm sure he'll play first and P will DH whenever they play a uh, American League team. And this is all, of course, if the NL has no DH. Um, let's just say like we're living in a world where that's official. How do you handle that left field situation with with Nemo and Dom? Uh, I mean, I think it's got to be who's hot. If Dom's hot, you play Dom. That's true. It has to, it has to be who's. I mean, because they both are such great hitters. It's got to be who's hot at the time. Well, well, listen. I think Smith is by far the better hitter. You know what I mean, than Nemo. Winter. I mean, what do Dom's, you guys say right now? Dom's had one great year with his hitting. Right. But Nimmo, if you look at his stats throughout his career, has he's a very underrated hitter. But he's had he's many more. Dom Smith, are you fucking kidding Dom, me? Dom put up three thirty over sixty games. No, and he of only course. Re- like it was, it was it was a small sample size. Like I I understand that. Nimmo gets on base at a high percentage clip. Gets on base in front of the top guys in our lineup. Malfa, what do you say? I mean, I mean, just by track record, you're probably I mean, going to agree with Windrum, but, like, what's going – what do you – I think, I think you got to give it to, to Dom. I think his bat is too big. Yeah, my guy. Yeah. I feel like he's too much of a threat, you know, just to change a game with just one swing. Or, like, Nimmo, I mean, he hits, he, he hits home runs here and there, but nothing like Dom. Yeah. It's too big of a I mean, bat to get out. My thing with Nimmo compared to Dom is Nimmo's, Nimmo just gets on base at such a high clip. He draws a lot of Nimmo walks. gets on base at – yeah, no, like if he gets on base at about a 400 clip. I mean, having a guy like that play a lot is awesome for your team. Yeah, but he – he's not like a Joey Votto kind of on-base guy. You know what I mean? Like, like if he was like that, then I'd be, okay, like, yeah. Then we – you know, there might be a serious conversation between him and Dom. I just feel like the Dom, like, just really – I think he showed out too much to not earn, you know, a legitimate, a legitimate. Shot. No, Dom definitely deserves to go into this season as the guy in that field. Yeah, but I feel like we can't let Nimmo slide under the radar too much. Like he's got to be in consideration more than we think. No, that's fair. No, I, you know, I'm not saying just you know stick him on the bench and never, you know, like don't consider him. But I just, I mean, Fangraphs right now is projecting him. 18 homers, uh, 62 ribbies, hitting at a lower clip than he's ever hit in his career, except for 2019 when he was hurt with a 377 on base. All right, and then what is hand for Smith? Type that in real quick. Because Dom, like, you know, he, I don't think he'll be like a 270 kind of guy. I mean, like, I think he could hit like 290, 300, maybe 310. I definitely play. could see. Uh, they're projecting. 24, 78, 252, and 317 on base. Wow, that is low. That's very low. Yeah, I mean, I guess oh, and they're you are projecting, right. They're projecting him with a minus 11 and a half defensive run saved. <laughs> oh, man. Which is another discrepancy between Dom and No, he's, he's not going to be good at, on defense. And the, dude, this is a hard choice because, I mean – the Mets defense has been atrocious, you know. For yeah, long, especially for if we're time. looking to go in that direction, you know, you, it's more of a question than we would really think. Especially if we're looking to go in the direction of being a better defensive team. Okay, final answer right now. I say, fuck the defense. We go Dom in left field. I think that it's just it's just a bat you can't keep out there and just work them, work them in spring training, work them. You know, he should work on it right now in the off season. Just bust your ass to try to be, you know, as good as you possibly can in the outfield. I agree. Start Dom, but uh, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be opposed to starting Dom and having Nimmo come in late in games as def- that, defense. That see, that's that's fine. Like that's perfectly yeah. understandable. Yeah. Hopefully. There's days, a, what are you saying? So hopefully there's a DH because then I would put, yeah. I would put Dom at first. P A D. And then, yeah. and then uh, Pete's gonna DH. Yeah. Then we don't no, even no. have to worry. Yeah, and then and then Nimmo can just stay in left field because like, I I don't mind. Like, I've never been a huge brand Nimmo fan, like, but I, like I don't mind him. Like I wouldn't mind him patrolling left. You know, like, I do think he's a good player to have on your team. Um, so yeah, I think we're all in agreement that Dom 
should get the start. Um, you know, I mean, in 2019, he was pretty atrocious in the outfield, but I think that was like his first like kind of go around with that. So hopefully he gets some more innings, some more games out there uh, underneath his belt and he can improve a little bit. So last thing we should talk about, um, kind of start a little bit of a ranking right here. Rank our all-time favorite Mets walk-up songs. So let's go down the line. Let's go. I see on the top of the screen here. So I'll, I'll go first, mouth for the Windrum, and then we'll, we'll almost like Snake, and then Windrum will go, mouth will go, then I'll go. We'll go down the list. So starting at number five, this, this isn't very creative by me, so don't, you know, don't make fun of me too much, but I'm going to go with number five, The London, the song by Travis. I'm pretty sure it's Travis Scott, right? The London, or he, he's in the song? Yeah. And that's, that was Michael Conforto's walk-up song. I just feel like the past few years, like, when I've gone there, like, it just – I just like hearing that, like, like when he comes up. It's, like, a smooth song. He's He's got a smooth swing. So that's why I got number five. But, again, not the, a very creative answer. Uh, for my number five, I got – I actually got a little – I got a one with a pitcher. I went with with Syndergaard. Uh, Syndergaard has the Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, yeah. That's, that's, that's probably better number five. Yeah, I like hearing that. All right, nice. my number five. I'm going with a throwback right here. It's also a pitcher. I'm going with Billy Wagner, who had Enter Sandman, because he had it before Mo, and I just love the fact. Yeah, Billy Wagner had it before Mo. I just love the fact he kept his entire career, especially when he came to New York with Mo there. So that that goes for me number five because I loved the spite. Wait, why did I not know that? Yeah, he had it his entire career. He had it from when he came up to. Is when he retired with Boston. When did Mariano have that? Like Mariano, oh. Mariano came in like two years after Wagner or something like that. Wow. Two or three years after Wagner. So that's bullshit because Wagner should be a Hall of Famer. I mean, that, that, Wagner will be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. I think that you should get it. That's a whole separate conversation, but yeah. Wow. Okay. Well. So now on to my number four. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go with Carlos Beltran. That's the key. I don't know why, but every time he came in, I just felt like yeah, it's a good one. You know, City Field was dancing. City Field and Shea were dancing. Uh, for my number four, uh, I don't know if you guys have him on the list too, but I enjoy it. And I'm paying a little tribute to our group chat. Uh, I picked Luis Guillorme. Uh I like uh, he got the really little, little Louis song. I like hearing that. I remember when I went to a game two summers ago. Um. Against the Nationals when he hit the walk off, or not the walk off, but like the, the gate that took the lead. Yeah, his first career homer. Wait, wait, wait. What's the song called? Uh, Brother Louie by uh, I think it's Stories. I think it. I think it is. Okay, I like it. Yeah, I remember the whole, all the fans were, were started singing it when he came up to bat. It was it was great. Nice. So I'm going number four, Windrum. I copied you unintentionally. Ellis Daaki. That it's a classic, no doubt. Classic Mets. Classic there. Number three, because we got nine minutes left. So, number three, I got got five on it, David Wright. That was almost like a staple of my childhood going to like, – because a guy like David Wright, like, you wouldn't think we'd have, like, a rap song like that, but he had it, and it was perfect. It was nice and smooth, and that was a good one. So, that, that's my number three. Uh, for my number three, I had Curtis Granderson. I had Drop It Like It's Hot with Snoop Dogg. Oh, man. <laughs> so – for my number three, I had Matt Harvey, Ain't No Love in the Heart of the city, of the Bloody City. It was like a mashup between uh, Sunday, Bloody Sunday by U2 and Heart of the City by Jay-Z. And every time he just came out, it was the best. Like, he was walking out for a start, and that thing, that song just started blaring. I mean, being at, I was at the um, NLCS Game 1 in 2015, and when he walked out to the mound and that just started playing, the whole yeah. stadium just started rocking from first pitch. So that's, that's my number three. That's a good one. So number two, um, I'm gonna go with the goat, Jacob Degrom, "Simple Man" by oh, Leonard Skinner. Wow. I feel like that just embodies Degrom. Just calm, simple, smooth. Right there. He's right outside my top five. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good choice. My number two I had, even though I I can't stand them now, uh, I have put Cespedes on there. Uh, with the Circle of Life from Lion King. Oh man, you guys are boxing these one and twos. Cause I, that was my know, honorable mention. Oh my god! You see, I I think I got the best one two combo. I think I have the best number one. I'll say that. So number two for me, 
is new. It was this year. It's Edwin Diaz's walkout song, Narco. That was on my honorable mentions. I love that one. How is it on your honorable mentions? Are you? What is wrong with you? That is, I mean, my other three are awesome. So, like, real, like, like, if we can go to a game and we, it's like if Diaz can go back to like where he's like locked down, if that song is blasting and you know the game's going to be over, like, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Like, that song is so hype. It's a great song for a closer to come out to. So, that's number two. Windrum, shame on you for that being in your honorable mentions. Shame on you. Um, my number one is Joanna Cespedes, but it's called The Power. Cespedes. Yes, the Cespedes song. Yes. That one was awesome. That is hands down my number one. I still listen to it. I still listen to that this day. Just reminds me of 2015, all the great moments. So, Narco, Cespedes, best one two combo. You can't go in any other direction. I'm sorry, guys, but. I'll let you guys uh, hash out your your number ones. I actually went with Todd Frazier my number one. Little Frank uh, Frank Sinatra. Oh, okay. You know what? That's an outside the box pick, and I I respect that. I respect that. Wait, which uh, which Sinatra song was that? Which one was it? He was Fly Me to the Moon. Yeah, Fly Me. Yeah, that's what it was. I read wow, the name. Alpha. That is my number. I did not expect that, but I like it. My number one is easily my favorite walk-up song of all time. Daniel Murphy, Shipping Up to Boston. Oh, I should have had that. Yes. He, come on. Yeah, when he walked up to the plate every single time in 2015 and you heard that beginning part of the Shipping Up to Boston, you just got the instant feeling, all right, Murph's about to do something right here. And, I mean, the first inning, you know, early on in the game, Murph comes up, you hear that, you're like, all right, let's go, Murph. Seventh inning rolls back around, it plays again. You're yeah. like, oh, Murph's going to come up clutch right here. <laughs> yeah. So that's my number one. Dude, that's good, man. That's really good. Um, yeah, you guys brought up two really good ones. The Malfoy, your Game of Thrones theme, and then the shipping out to Boston, I feel like should have been in my top five, but I don't know. Uh, listen, all of them are good. They're all classics. Malfoy, you really just dropped a hammer on this list, putting Todd Frazier number one. Wow. <laughs> You got big balls, man. I had to do it. I like it, though. I like it. You got it. You mixed it up. But that's, that's it. That's all, uh, that's all we got today. Um, as always, we'll be back for any breaking news, um, trades, whatever it is. So, And if not, we'll do something like this where talk about some just news that you know, has been rumbling around. But, uh, and then you know, maybe do like a list at the end, something fun. So, Check in on the Instagram, flushing it out pod, Twitter, flushing it out pod, right, Windrum? That's, a, that's what yep. it's at. So, flushing it out pod, our man Windrum's on top of this shit on that. So, going to get this out on all platforms as soon as we can. So, we'll see you next time. See you, boys. Yep.